One of my really proud moments uh, in terms of the work we've done in housing uh, occurred in the legislature uh, several decades ago, and I'm not going to name any names. Is, um, and as the then Senate president walked by me, he turns his head and he says to me, haven't they shot you yet? And what that meant to me is that you know, he recognizes that we've been doing work uh, for people who are not very popular and certainly don't have much political power. When people don't have shelter, every other aspect of their life uh, is threatened. Their, um, their access to food, uh, medical services, uh, their ability to even receive uh, income. You know, sometimes people are paying huge percentage of their income for their housing, and they should get what they pay for. I think the biggest success is the virtual end to arbitrary evictions, that the passage of the good cause eviction statute. You know, I never talked to people that were facing that kind of a situation, so that was a huge change. Very early on, um, we were able to get uh, to work with uh, advocates uh, and residents of manufactured housing parks. Uh, and we now have uh, a law that says before an investor, a landlord or a park owner can sell a, their park to another investor, they have to give the tenants 60 days to organize a, an association. And now we have over 120 manufactured housing parks where the residents are the landlord. That gives them more security. I think I've heard you say this before, Elliot, is that even though things have changed a great deal in some ways, they're not really a whole lot better. People still face all kinds of problems with their rental housing. In New Hampshire over the last five years, I would say that uh, there are have been about 7,000 people evicted. That is 7,000 households uh, per year, per year. And, you know, that's just way too many. Again, especially when you look at the, the difficulty of getting them rehoused, um, the loss of, of access to schools where kids have been um where kids have been uh, it's successful, the loss of a job because he had to go too far away to get it, and the inability to get a job or a new place because of the eviction on your record. There's so many things that are adversely affected. The work that Lark does, and sometimes we do, in uh, in defeating evictions on technical grounds are really, really important to enable people to get the time they need so they don't end, end up homeless as a result of the eviction. There are four motions that we provide to tenants that lay out the legal argument for certain defenses. They fill in their own names and dates and things of that nature. They can submit those to the court. And they have to, they're written in such a way that tenants can argue them also. And then there are other remedies available to those landlords to recover. For example, if they are owed money, they can sue their tenants in small claims court. But we're just making sure that people know what their rights are and that they're able to make what we call a graceful exit from their property. We need a lot more resources to cut that number way, way down. Um, out of those 7,000, I, uh, I would suggest that two-thirds of them can be avoided 